Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wompley here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Fountainhead and hopefully make things just a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to go ahead and enter in the email address that you put on the previous Wompley page directly into the box as shown. Then, we're going to go ahead and click this bright blue box that says Get Started. It's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine where it's going to ask you to check your inbox. What it's going to do is it's going to send a temporary password code directly to the email that you just went ahead and entered to make sure that it is in fact valid. Once you enter in that code, go ahead and click continue. It's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine where it's going to ask you a question. Have you already had a PPP loan or did you not fill out a PPP loan before? In my particular case, we're going to go ahead and click no previous PPP loan. Now, it's going to ask us a little bit more, which has loan eligibility. So we're going to have to check the eligibility, or we can go ahead and skip ahead if you do know your payroll and eligibility amounts. So, for our case, we're going to go ahead and click Check Eligibility, just to be able to help us with our math. So loan eligibility, it's going to start by asking you a whole bunch of questions. So first, was your business in operation on February 15, 2020? Yes or no? Was your business in operation for all of 2019? Yes or no? Is your business a seasonal employer? Yes or no? Does your business employ people besides the owners? Yes or no? How many people does your business have? You're going to enter in the total number of employees that you have at your business. Is your business a destination marketing organization? In my case, no. Is your business publicly traded? Yes or no? Then you're going to go ahead and click Next. After that, it's going to ask you for some payroll details. So starting at the top, we're going to enter in the values based on the full time period of your choosing. You have a couple of options. You can enter in all the information for 2019, 2020, or just the last 12 months. In my case, we're going to click 2019 because that's going to make things just a little bit easier. So first, we're going to enter in the total payroll, including the owner compensation. Next, we're going to enter in the total payroll amount that includes the, pay, uh, the benefits and taxes. If you have not, go ahead and click no. If it does, click yes. In my case, it's a yes. Next, this business is a farm or ranch according to the Economic Aid Act. In my case, no. Then it's going to ask us for some information about employee details. So first, number of employees as of 2-15-2020. 2 some of these employees are located out of the United States, yes or no. Some of these, file, uh, these employees will file a Form 1099, yes or no. Some of these employees are paid more than $100,000 a year, yes or no. Then, it's already entered in your information here, your average monthly payroll and the total number of employees that you have. After that point in time, double check it, make sure it's correct. Next, do you wish to refinance an economic injury disaster loan? known as an idle loan that they filled out last year into this PPP. We're going to click yes or no. In my case, we're going to go ahead and click no. Then last but not least, before continuing forward, your business, including affiliated businesses, must meet one of the conditions. Do you have more than, 400, uh, than 500 employees, SBA alternative size, or industry size? In my case, because it's 250, we have no more than 500 employees. After we filled out all of this information, it's going to show you the amount that you could potentially qualify for in the idle, uh, including any idle amount and what your PPP looks like. Then we're going to go ahead and hit next. As you can see, it keeps track of your progress over here on the right hand side. So we're going to continue to be able to fill this out. Now it's going to ask us for your business information. So first we're going to enter in the business legal name. If you have a DBA or do business as or a trademark name, all you have to do is click DBA and then enter in the DBA as shown. Next, you're going to enter in your business phone number. This way, again, they have a valid way of being able to reach you in case they have any kind of questions, comments, or concerns, and it makes the whole process a whole lot easier. Last but not least, it's going to ask you for your address, city, state, and zip code. Again, so that they can val uh, validate all of the information on file for this particular business and ensure that we are talking to the correct person. San Francisco. California. 
And then our zip code, 94104. After you've entered in all of the information directly here on the page, go ahead and click Next. After that, it's going to ask you for some more business information. So first, it's going to start off with your industry NAICS code. If you don't know what your NAICS code is, that's totally okay. This is a number that allows the government to be able to classify you based on what you actually do. If you don't have that number or you don't know what that is, go ahead and click to find your NAICS code, click here. Once you have that number, you're going to go ahead and enter it directly into the box as shown. Next, what's your business legal structure? There we go. Made sure that it actually matches just like that. What's your business legal structure? Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to find the option based on the drop down that fits you and your particular business. In my case, it's an S Corp. Next, we're going to fill out just a little bit more. So your year of establishment. In my case, we're going to scroll all the way down to 2012. We're going to go to February 1st, 2012. Make sure that you get that right to the best of your knowledge. Next, you're going to enter in your employer identification number. Again, this is the number that we use to find you in the system that identifies you for tax purposes as this is a tax-based loan. If you don't have a bi uh, business EIN, go ahead and click this box and it'll ask you to enter in a different set of information. Last but not least, is this business a franchise? Yes or no? Go ahead and click the applicable answer. In my case, no. Now we're going to click next. Almost done. Now you're going to enter in the ownership information. This is required by the government for your paycheck protection application, and it's based on your SBA form 2483. So we're going to go ahead and enter my name, last name. If the owner is a corporate entity, please click this box so you can enter in the applicable information. The email address. This is going to be the primary email address used on the account. That way they have a better way to be able to contact you. A phone number so that it can get in contact with you in case they have any kind of questions, comments, or concerns. Your job title. Your date of birth. Make sure that you get this right to the best of your ability. Go ahead. Again, it is a scrolling one. Make sure that you Click on the correct boxes as shown. Then you're going to add in your tax ID or SSN. As always, any and all information that we show you guys directly in a video like this is um, using dummy numbers to be able to give you guys an exact idea of what this is supposed to look like. After that, this owner is authorized to sign legal documents for the company. You're going to go ahead and make sure that that box is clicked. After that, it's going to take you to this lovely sliding scale as shown. This is the amount of ownership that you actually have in the company. Scale that to the appropriate amount to make sure that the box, that the box is correct. After that point in time, you're going to enter in the owner, address, city, state, and zip code. San Francisco. Just make sure you enter in that state code, just like I showed you guys in the previous page. And then your zip code. If you have the business address, or if it is in fact different, go ahead and click use business address. After that, it's going to ask you for some voluntary self-identification. This is optional, however, we do recommend filling out all portions of the application. So, it's going to ask you for your veteran status by clicking on the drop-down. Your gender by clicking on the drop-down your race by scrolling through what is actually here, and your ethnicity to make sure that we can have the best information on the loan. If you have more than one owner in your particular business, please go ahead and click the blue button that says add owner. It'll take you through the same steps that I showed you here to be able to fill out my information. After you have all of the information for every owner applicable for the particular business, go ahead and click next takes a couple of seconds as it's going to go through and validate your information and ensure that everything is correct and up to date. Please don't refresh the page, please don't re-scroll, and please don't try to resubmit it. We want to make sure that this is as easy as possible. We're almost there. Now it's going to ask you for government declarations. So, 
starting at the top and working our way down. What is the purpose of the loan? You're going to click everything that applies. In my particular case, I am only going to click payroll costs, but this PPP can be used for everything from payroll, utilities, property damage, worker protection, supplier costs, etc. Please click everything that you're going to be using to be able to fill out this, the application. Next, is the U.S. the principal place of residence for all employees included in the payroll calculation for this business? Yes or no? Do the owners of the business own any other business? Yes or no? In my case, we're going to go ahead and click no. Did this business receive an SBA economic injury disaster loan between January 31st and 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? Yes or no? Is this a bit... Is this business a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Yes or no? Then go ahead and click Next. These are a couple of mandatory qualifying questions. If any of these are answered yes, the loan will not be approved, but please make sure that you're answering them to the best of your ability. First, are any of the owners of the business debarred or excluded from this transaction by any federal department? Yes or no? We're going to go ahead and click No. Has the owner of the business, for this business, or any other business that they own, taken a loan guaranteed by any federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years? Yes or no? Is any owner of the business subject to criminal charges presently incarcerated or on probation? Again, yes or no. Please make sure that you initial to be able to certify this information is true and correct. Has any owner of the business been convicted of a felony involving a financial crime in the last five years or been convicted of a felony or been placed on probation or parole within the last year? Yes or no? Again, click your answer and initial to say that that is true and correct. We're going to go ahead and click next. What it's going to do is it's going to finish this out with your certifications. This means that the authorized representative of the applicant must certify in good faith to all of the following below. So, starting at the top, that you were in operation on February 15th, 2020 and have not permanently closed, and that you were either an eligible self-employed individual, an independent contractor, sole proprietorship with no employees, or had employees for whom it paid salaries or payroll taxes, or paid independent contractors as reported on your forms. Your current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of the documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, covered utilities, and covered worker protection expenditures, and not more than 40% of the forgiven amount may be used for non-payroll costs. If required, the applicant will provide to the lender and or SBA documentation verifying the number of full-time employees on the applicant's payroll as well as the dollar amounts of eligible expenses. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant from the SBA. The applicant is not an issuer. The securities of which are listed in the exchange registered as a national securities exchange under Section 6. You certify that the information provided in this application and the information in all supporting documents is true and accurate in all material respects. That you understand that knowingly make a false statement and to obtain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable under the law, including all of these penalties and that you acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using the required documents submitted, that you understand, acknowledge, and agree that the lender can share any tax information that you've provided with the SBA's authorized representatives, including authorized representatives of the SBA Office of Inspector General, for the purpose of compliance with the SBA loan program. Once you read through this, go ahead and click Next. Now it's going to give you some more certifications. So you're, what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to add initial next to every single one of these. Just like we kind of went through what they actually all say, we need to make sure that we actually initial next to every single portion of the document. Again, where this is a guaranteed SBA loan, we want to make sure that we're filling this out as quickly and as efficiently as we possibly can. Continue scrolling and hit next. Now, it's going to ask you to review your information. If you want to go back and change anything on your eligibility, your business information, your ownership, or your government declarations. Otherwise, go ahead and click Next. 
After that point in time, it's going to ask you to upload all of your documentation. So your entity documents if applicable, bank statement, driver's license, front and back, a canceled check, additional supporting documentation, your IRS Form 1090, IRS Form 941 for the last quarter, 2019 business tax returns, and an email wire document. So let's go ahead and find those. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter in all the information as applicable. All you have to do is click the upload button, find the correct thing in your documents folder on your computer, go ahead and click upload. It takes a couple of seconds, go to the next one, find the appropriate document, click open, make sure that it actually uploads. We're going to do this a couple of times to make sure that we have any and all information that they've asked for that is true and correct to the best of our ability. Again, where this is an example, we want to show you guys what it looks like once it's true and correct to make sure it's filled out to the best of your ability. Again, we click on Upload, we click on the correct document, and we click Yes. We click Upload, we click on the correct document, click Open. Almost there. We click Upload, we find the correct document, we click Open. Two more. We click Upload. We're going to find the correct document and we're going to click open. And the last one, before we go ahead and click submit, we're going to click upload, find that correct document and click open. As you can see, it shows you every single piece of documentation as you've um, directly uploaded it for each individual section to make sure that the names of the files are correct. After you filled this out to the best of your ability, go ahead and hit submit. What this is going to do is it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine, where you can see your app, your app number, your business name, the loan amount, status, and action. So any and everything that you need to do at this point in time, you're actually pretty good. At this point, what's going to happen is this particular lender is going to continue to reach out to you directly via email in case they have any questions, comments, concerns, or need additional information from you. In the meantime, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us directly. Thanks so much.